Hi, this is David, and in this um, module, what I'm really trying to do in, in this placenta teaching series is to explain the topology, the three-dimensional topology of the placenta membrane and fetus and how the placenta implants and relate that to the two-dimensional structure of the section that the pathologist looks at. So really what I want people to come out of this with is a sense of when they look at a slide of a placenta to have a knowledge of an answer to the question, what am I looking at? So if we look at this schema here, this is the umbilical cord, and this is the amniotic lining of the umbilical cord, and that reflects onto the fetal surface of the placenta, and the fetal surface of the placental disc. And this structure here, we could call the chorionic plate, or the fetal surface. And it's about, and right here is the amniotic cavity, And the fetus is, is, is in the amniotic cavity, as is the umbilical cord. So this is the amniotic cavity, here's the amniotic cavity, and here's the umbilical cord right here. And so the amnion reflects on top of the fetal surface, and that's really the side that faces the fetus. So this faces up, faces fetus. And then, here are the umbilical arteries. I left the veins out for the sake of... It in, so it won't be too busy, so it won't be too complex, but it's really just par a parallel system. So the umbilical arteries run and ramify within the chorionic plate, so they run radially on top of the fetal surface, and then they have branches, like a branch here, and a branch here, and a branch here. This could be a branch of this artery, and this is a branch of this artery, and many more, and the branches sort of dive down and form the placental parenchyma itself, the substance of the placental parenchyma. But if you ever look at a placenta from the fetal surface on, you could see that before the placental, before the, before the vessels dive down and sort of give rise to the cotyledons, give rise to the lobules in the parenchyma, the, the arteries and the veins coming off the umbilical cord, the way they ramify, the way they radiate, it's almost a bit of a radial pattern on the fetal surface of the placenta, they run through the chorionic plate before they then, if you could imagine that there's depth, they then s dive down sort of into the depths of, 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 of the disc. So if we go back to our scheme and imagine that in cross-section, here are the vessels ramifying through the, the chorionic plate, and right here, this structure is the chorionic plate, right here, right here. This structure is the chorionic plate. And so the side of the chorionic plate that faces the fetus is the amnion. And then there's connective tissue, and you always see the connective tissue. And then its deep aspect of the chorionic plate is bound by these extravillous trophoblast cells. So here we could see these extravillous trophoblast cells, and another word for them is chorion. And it's really the same chorion that we see. It's the exact same chorion that reflects upwards here and form the chorion, which is sort of the inner the outer layer, sorry, of the fetal membranes external to the amnion. So here, the, this chorion, so, that, so, so in other words, what I'm saying is that, th that this chorion that we see here is the same as the chorion that we see here in, in the section of the fetal membranes. And so, th this, it, uh, this itself is the chorionic plate. So, just to recapitulate, the side that faces the fetus is the amnion, and then deep to that, the, 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 the deep side is formed sort of by these extravillous trophoblast cells of the chorion, and the vessels ramify through. And then, the artery runs through, and then sort of plunges in, and forms the placental disc proper. And here, the, ve the vessel... I don't really know the mathematics of the branching. I don't know that anybody really knows for certain. But <coughs> the, 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 we could imagine that the vessel sort of bifurcates. So here it could bifurcate here. And then the artery could bifurcate. The fetal artery could bifurcate. And that bifurcation could give rise to another bifurcation. And this bifurcation could give rise to another bifurcation and another bifurcation. Almost like a fractal branching pattern. And so... And so... Um, Th that, and that gives rise to these 
to, to the villa structure of the placenta. And of course, the connective tissue that we see within the chorion, and it's also continuous with the connective tissue in the umbilical cord, also follows down along the arteries, but as you go more and more and more distal, the connective tissue gets less and less and less. And that's because these sort of more terminal structures are, 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 are more important for exchange, and sort of I'll elaborate that in a minute. So at this level, what we probably have is arteries, fetal arteries, and then as they get smaller, at some point they'll become arterioles, and finally at some level they really become capillaries. And at that level of branching, you really are in an exchange villus, or a terminal villus. So you could sort of imagine that this is sort of like a larger distributive villus. So you could sort of think of it as a stem or primary villus. And then this could be a secondary or intermediate villus. And then that's followed at the very end. You have the distal terminal villi. And in the, these terminal villi, like here, for example, this is where the exchange occurs. And it's sort of similar to the lung, that you have branching and branching and branching to smaller structures. You have your larger distributive structures, sort of like the stems of the tree. And then at the, at the end, you have the foliage, the leaves, that is where the, the exchange occurs, where the magic occurs. And that's sort of in, these, sort of in the distal foliage here, here. Um, so, 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 so we've discussed the arteries coming down and branching and forming these, you know, smaller and smaller arteries. And what delimits, what delimits the villi at their external aspect is a layer called the syncytocytotrophoblastic layer. Syncytocytotrophoblastic layer. And really, it's just a fusion of the syncytio and cytotrophoblast. They sort of fuse together. And so the embryological syncytiotrophoblast and cytotrophoblast fuse and form a single common layer. And, and that's the outer limit of the villi. And that's the layer at which gas exchange will occur with the maternal circulation. And we do see, running along the syncytiocytotrophoblast, external to it, occasional clusters of, beyond that, we see occasional clusters here, of extravillous trophoblast. So even beyond the syncytiocytotrophoblast, we see these extravillous trophoblasts, which is very, very similar to the chorion. The other thing that I would point out is some of the villi are not so much exchange villi, but there's sort of these long, rectilinear anchoring villi, so this right here is like an anchor. You could see this villus is sort of like a long anchoring villus. And it has a lot of these extra villus trophoblasts at its outside, and it implants into the maternal surface. It's sort of like a stem villus or an anchoring villus. And it forms an anchor into the maternal plate of the placenta, and that's what really gives the, the, the placenta its attachment. And here are your anchoring villi, and they tend to have a lot of extra villus trophoblasts running up and down their length, and sort of at the bottom, there's sort of a whole cluster of extravillous trophoblast. And at the basal portion of the placenta, so this will be the maternal side of the placenta, this will be the basal plate, so in other words, where the placenta is implanted, you have your anchoring villus, and then you have this layer where the extravillous trophoblast that sort of had formed your chorion here, they form this layer under the chorionic plate. They reflect down along the anchoring and stem villi. And then they reflect just above the maternal decidua. And they form part of the basal plate or implantation site. So you have, as you can see, the green here represents the extravillous trophoblast. You have a layer of extravillous trophoblast here. And just above the extravillous trophoblast, what I've drawn in pink here, or orange, sorry, in orange, is this layer that's called the fibrinoid. Not, it's, it's sort of like fibrin, but it's called fibrinoid. Oid means fibrin-like. So you have your fibrinoid, and then underneath that, your extravillous trophoblast, and underneath that, your decidua. And because this is the basal decidua, this will be called the decidua basalis, or the deep decidua, the decidua that's underneath the placenta, as opposed to the decidua that's around the membrane that we call the decidua capsularis. So, um, so, so, so that's your implantation site of your placenta. Now, running through the decidua basalis are vessels, and you have these sort of 
cannibalize spiral arterioles. So this is a maternal. So one thing I just want to emphasize that everything here, so most of the tissue here, is all fetal tissue. All of this is fetal. But this is maternal tissue. And um, the decidua is a maternal tissue. Everything above the decidua is fetal tissue. And within the decidua, you have these arterioles. And you might say to me, but David, these don't look like arterioles. They're so thin-walled. How could this be an arterial? And the answer is, is that they've been rendered into a low pressure, or uh, sorry, a low resistance system because they've been cannibalized and altered and in a sense replaced by invading extravillous trophoblast cells. And so it's actually very, very interesting because biologically it's it said that, and I think it's been proven, that the endothelium and the lining of these vessels is actually replaced by extravillous trophoblast. So if you think about it, the extravillous trophoblast, as, as you'll see later on, throughout the placenta, sort of become the quasi-endothelium -endoth for the maternal circulation. So the maternal blood goes in here and sort of circulates around and circulates in this space. All the dark space in here is where the maternal blood will circulate and it'll come around and come out through the veins and these veins are located once again within the decidua basalis. So we, it is said also, or it's been shown, that the spiral arterioles enter in the center of a lobule, so they'll enter here in the center of a lobule and the veins drain at the periphery of the lobule, so the blood will come in here and go out here. So blood, arterial blood enters here and the venous blood comes out here. But that's not so critical. So the main thing then to understand is, is that you've got your maternal blood space, which is sort of your, your dark space here and here and here. All of this is your maternal blood space. And then you've got your fetal, um, your fetal um, um, villi and what's going to occur now is gas exchange. Gas and nutrient exchange between the maternal space here and the fetal villus here. And that's what I've illustrated in, in, in the next um, series of, uh, of, of illustrations and I will um, discuss that in the, next, in the next module. Thank you for listening.